sci-fi and fantasy short stories. A True Night by Cameron Craig The crowd erupted into cheer as the jouster's wooden lance splintered off his opponent's shield. Danlor, a young boy, sat in the stands next to his father, Barwin. Danlor watched the tournament in awe. It was a spectacle he had never seen before. They were from the farmlands and only took a trip into the city once every few years. He had never seen knights or jousting before. He had only heard them in the stories his mother read to him or the songs the farm workers would sing during a hard day's labor. I want to be just like them. I want to be a royal knight someday, Denler said, his gaze transfixed on the knight's shining armor and the long blonde hair draping down the back of his helmet and down his breastplate. Ah, those aren't knights, Barwin dismissed, interrupting Denlor's fantasy. What's the quote I told you? <sighs> a knight in shining armor, Denlor reluctantly recited, is a knight who has never had his armor tested. <sighs> he hated when his father brought up this quote. He brought it up every time his mother read him a story about a knight. You don't want to be a knight, Barwin said. These discussions were routine. He knew his father wanted the best for him, but even at his young age, he knew his father wasn't a learned man. Barwin was illiterate and had spent the vast majority of his life on farms or in small fishing villages. Barwin was never trained or participated in combat. How could he know anything about knighthood? Danlor listened to him and valued the wisdom that naturally came with age, but he still planned to be a knight errant as soon as he was of age. Nothing would stop that. These are not knights, Stanlaw. They're no different than bards playing for a show. They just use lances instead of lutes. Do you see him over there? Barwin pointed to an elderly man in another section of the stands. The man had bags under his eyes and scars on his withered and sunken face. He wore cheap and dirty linens beneath rusted armor littered with dents and nicks. That's a knight, Barwin said. You don't want to be a knight. <sighs> Danlord took notice, but his eyes quickly shifted back toward the decorations and engravings on the jouster's shiny armor as his horse charged toward his opponent. The wood burst into a dozen pieces as the jouster drove the lance into his opponent's shield. The crowd cheered again as the jouster took off his helmet and waved to his lady in victory. Danlor wanted that. He wanted the thrill, prestige, and the courting of women that came with it. Ah, he wanted it all. Danlor now older with a stocky frame and broad shoulders, was wearing shiny armor. A purple tunic laid over his breastplate, a signature for all knight errants. He was accompanied by two knights as they rode on horseback down a dirt path that parted a sea of trees. To his left, the knight had a crude red stripe across his breastplate. On Danlor's right, the knight had a faded green stripe. Both of the knight's armors were battle-worn and dull, covered in scratches and dents. Danlor kept his helmet on and left the visor down, hiding his face. He sat upright and proper, trying to maintain composure and control over his mount. The two other knights rode with ease and didn't wear helmets. Their graying hair flowed in the bitter wind. Relax. Ease your shoulders. You're wasting energy the Red Knight said. Let the horse guide you. Don't guide the horse. I know what I'm doing, Danlor snapped back. Look at Danlor, <laughs> the greatest fighter and rider to have ever lived, the Green Knight mocked with a hearty laugh. With his bright and shiny armor, he will blind his enemies, the Red Knight joined in, kicking Danlor's horse, sending it into a strut. The mare bucked and sped up, causing Danlor's pauldrons to bounce and clash against his breastplate as he struggled to stay upright until eventually the horse calmed down. 
The knights laughed as their horses passed Danlor. Danlor drew his sword and pointed it at the Red Knight. You think you're funny? He threatened as he stopped his mount. Unfazed, the knights stopped their horses and turned around. The Green Knight instructed his horse to move closer to Danlor, who stood block-like atop his horse with his helmet cage still hiding his face. Danlor pointed the tip of his newly crafted sword toward the Green Knight's throat. I said, you think you're funny, Danlor repeated to the Green Knight. The Green Knight stared at him silently for a moment before offering his water skin of wine. Drink, you need it. No, Danlor quickly declined. I will not drink. Then you must laugh with us, the Red Knight said. No, I'm not playing your games, Danlor said. We have a task to complete. It is my duty as a knight errant to see to it that we complete that task. Oh, you're so eager, the Green Knight said. You reminded me of myself. What do you think a life as a knight is like? Denlor lowered his sword. A life of duty, he said proudly. A life of honor, living the chivalric codes, serving my king or baron so that justice is served. Denlor had rehearsed that answer as he'd been asked that question many times before. The glory, fame, and women that came with knighthood were an always pleasant bonus. It just wasn't a knightly thing to admit it. The Green Knight cracked a sympathetic smile. I suppose after your knight-errant assignment, you could take up a career as a jester. What? You're a funny man. That's not what a knight's life is. A knight's life is one of long travels with terrible pay and awful meals. The royal knights, born into wealthy families, will joust for show and court women... But for the other knights, the real knights, we get stuck out here with people like you. Danlor's demeanor changed. His shoulders sank, and he sheathed his sword. Have you ever taken a life? the Green Knight asked. No. Then drink. The Green Knight offered the water skin again. No, I need to be of my best mind. It's two elderly farmers, Danlor, the Red Knight said, trying to persuade him, holding out his water skin. It's not a dark beast or a werewolf. Your drunken games and jesting are all for show. You're no better than a bard, except you have swords instead of lutes. I'm going to be a better knight than both of you. The Red Knight's cadence became serious as he studied Danlor's shiny armor. Part of being a knight is knowing the importance of having fun, he refuted. If you can't, then you won't last as a knight. This profession eats those who can't have fun. Danlord didn't answer. He felt he was being hazed and didn't want to give in to their antics. We will test your worthiness soon enough, the Red Knight said. We're almost there. You see that light ahead? he asked, pointing to a faint fire in the ruins of an abandoned vine-covered church. I, I see it. That's where you'll become a true knight. The task grew more serious for Danlor now they could see the fire's light of where they were headed. He hadn't taken a life before, but felt he would be able to if ordered. He didn't know what the elderly couple was accused of. But it wasn't a knight's job to know. At least, that's what he told himself. There was a certain level of pride and honor, he felt, for following orders without question. Hopefully that would make it easier. Danlor and the two knights stood before a wooden door next to a small torch resting in a wall-mounted bracket. Don't be nervous, assured the green knight. Just as we taught you, Remember, only do what was instructed, nothing more. I know why we're here. I'm not nervous or scared, Denlor insisted. He was trying to convince himself more than them. I'm going in a man and coming out a knight, he said, knocking on the door.
Danlor had his helmet's visor up so he could see the frail, elderly farmer and his wife who sat in front of him. The two other knights stood by the door, their hands resting on their pommels of their sheathed swords. I'm sure you've had a long trip, the farmer said. Could I get you some ale? he asked with trembling hands. It was bitterly cold out there. Oh, that is beautifully crafted armor, the farmer's wife said to Danlor. We don't get many visitors out here, she continued, attempting to break the tension. So it's not often we get to see men wearing armor. What can we do for you? she asked pleasantly. Danlor turned behind him to the two other knights. They nodded to Danlor and exited the room. The elderly couple sat in confusion, staring at Danlor. He turned back to them and took a deep breath. The farmer and his wife clasped each other's hands in an embrace. Catching his breath, Danlor closed the wooden door behind him as he exited the ruined church. He poured water on the wall-mounted torch, extinguishing it. He wept the blood from his blade, his eyes welling and chin quivering. With petrified eyes twenty years beyond his age, Danlor walked toward the two other knights who were waiting with their horses. The Red Knight offered his water skin full of wine. Danlor took a sip and looked down at the sole nick in his breastplate. Cameron Craig is a writer based in the Boston area. He wrote screenplays for nearly a decade before deciding to make the switch over to novels. When he's not writing fiction, he can be found likely watching movies, playing video games, or cheering on his hometown team, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hey guys, hope you liked that one. As a reader, I definitely prefer the stories that romanticize knights and armor and all of that stuff, but it is definitely good to occasionally get the other view, the more realistic aspects of being a warrior, whether it be in medieval England or in modern-day warfare. There's a lot of things that people think are glorious that just are soul-crushing. I'm lucky enough that I never had to do any of that. Uh, being a diabetic, they wouldn't even let me in the military if I wanted. But I know people who have been, and it definitely leaves a mark. Sometimes they take it for the better, other times, not so much. But if you guys liked this story, be sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment if you're listening on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast, just be sure to subscribe for more brand new short stories. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.